Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in for another video. So in this video we're going to be covering the filtration system for the brand new 1000 gallon Mori tank. So I had to build this filtration system completely from scratch. I will show you why, I will show you the one that came with the tank. But uh, yeah, it's been about two weeks now that it's been running and um, everything is going well so far. So I'm going to show you exactly what I did to uh, filter this huge aquarium. So here we have the 1000 gallon uh, Mori Eel Aquarium and it's been running for a couple of weeks. Everything is going well except that the water is still a little bit cloudy. That is because of an algae bloom as well as a bacteria bloom but I will get into that in a little bit. So before I go into the filtration system uh, which I had to completely build from scratch by the way I'm going to show you why that is what the filtration system is that came with this tank and if you see it you're going to be like wow that's crazy okay here is the filtration system that came with the aquarium so as you can see it's pretty advanced so here we have something that is called a protein fractionator and it's literally taller than i am it's extremely big <laughs> complicated it comes with uh, multiple pumps and uh, this is something that is usually used on uh, I would say like a zoo display or like a 3,000 to 4,000 gallon tank so uh, completely overkill for what I'm trying to do but uh, from so the water would go into this skimmer first uh, be skimmed and then the water will go into this middle section here where you have some huge filter socks I mean these are enormous and uh, so additional mechanical filtration going on here and then we also have uh, three uv sterilizers so these are the bulbs and uh, lastly it would then be chilled by a 1.5 uh, horsepower water chiller and then i guess this is right here is uh, some fresh rdi water to top off the aquarium to uh, make up for anything that uh, got lost through condensation but yeah, uh, it even came with its own backup power support and then even with its own breaker box uh, because obviously this draws a lot of power. So <laughs> yeah, as you can see, um, this is not something that I would want in my living room. Um, the previous owner had it in his garage and he had this, uh, the aquarium in his living room and piping underneath you know, the house. And I didn't want to tear up the, you know, the half of my house to lay any piping. So I just took it in because it came with the tank and I may just sell it to somebody who has like an indoor pond or something. And uh, yeah, but let me show you now what the new filtration looks like. All right, guys. So let's talk about the filtration system. So usually uh, most saltwater aquariums uh, have a sump that sits underneath the aquarium. But the problem with this stand is that it has a bunch of bars that go diagonal and every couple of uh, every two three feet or so. So I simply didn't have enough space to put in any long sums underneath the tank. Therefore, I had to build something completely from scratch. So the way my filtration system works and everything you see here is custom, the piping, I did everything myself. So the water comes from the overflow box down into this um, acrylic aquarium. I basically bought this at OfferUp. This is a 55 gallon acrylic tank and I simply removed all the center pieces of the acrylic. And then I used some PVC piping to basically uh, build a platform. On, on top of that, I have some uh, filter media and I have some filter floss and also have a carbon pad down there. So this section right here will filter out any of the uneaten food, uh, any bigger chunks of whatever is floating in the aquarium, dead fish, anything like that. And then from there, the water is being skimmed. So here we have a protein skimmer that will get rid of anything else that's in the aquarium, anything that has proteins. And uh, this does a really good job. I have it feed into a five gallon container so I can easily uh, empty that out. And then from here, we have the um, 
chemical filtration in the form of carbon as well as some uh, secant purigen. So a lot of people think that the uh, chemical filtration should come last, but that's not necessarily true. I mean, the most important thing, in my opinion, is that you get rid of all the solid pieces in the water, and then you get uh, to the polishing of it, get anything of the fine stuff, and then you can move on to your uh, biological filtration. So now that we are done with the mechanical filtration and the chemical filtration, let's talk about the biological filtration. So in a reef tank, the biological filtration actually happens inside the tank if you have live rock and also live sand, because that's where the bacteria lives that takes part of that uh, part of the filtration. So when we talk about biological filtration, we're talking about um, ammonia being converted into nitrite and then from nitrate into nitrite into nitrate and then nitrate being also eaten up by the bacteria so that the water you know remains pristine so in there are two different types of bacteria however there's bacteria that lives on the outside of the rocks meaning the part of the rock that is in contact with the water that has a lot of oxygen and then there's also bacteria that is deep inside the rock so the bacteria that is outside of the rock or on the, on the outer surface is the bacteria that uses oxygen. It uses the ammonia as food. It converts the ammonia into nitrite and then from, uh, con uh, converts that into nitrate. And that bacteria is called nitrifying bacteria or aerobic bacteria. It's aerobic standing for air basically. And uh, this technically is uh, fine. I mean, I have a bunch of uh, live rock in here and live sand. So a lot of people would say well, you don't need to do anything else, especially in a cram this big. But I actually decided to um, set something up in addition to what I have besides my, chemical, uh, my mechanical and chemical filtration to make this a little bit more efficient. Because there's media available for filtration that does a little bit better job than just regular base rock or live sand. And uh, I'm going to show you that now. So basically, after the water is uh, mechanically filtered and chemically filtered, it flows through these Rubbermaid tubs. And I like them because they are clear, so I can see what's going on. And they also have lids. So the lids, as you can see, uh, prevent any uh, condensation. And uh, it's really easy to open up and to clean. But uh, basically, here is where my first part of the biological filtration takes place. So the conversion from ammonia to nitrite and from nitrite into nitrate. So the filter media that I chose for this very first tub is this ceramic uh, biofilter media. And this is very similar to the yellow uh, filter material from Higger, I, I believe it's pronounced. But that one is used for fresh water. For some reason, you're not supposed to use it for salt water, but this one is fine for salt water. So it even says it right here, fresh and salt water. So the reason why I chose that one is because the water, again, is very uh, high in oxygen here because the protein skimmer produces a lot of bubbles. And as you can see, uh, the bubbles come out from here and then being fed into this very first chamber. So this very first chamber has a lot of oxygen and is full with um, ammonia. And basically, this is where the bi uh, biological filtration starts for me. So I chose to use that material here because it has these uh, holes in the middle. So if there are any solids still left in the water, they will not immediately clog up this filter material. and. Uh, so we have a lot of oxygen in here, we have ammonia, and the bacteria that grows in here will uh, use some of that oxygen and convert some of that ammonia into nitrite. Then in the next box here, we have some ceramic media as well. And here we have the rings, ceramic rings, very popular choice of media. And I use that one because this one has a little bit smaller opening, so any bigger chunks that are somehow got caught in here, they will no longer clog, clog up this part. So here we only have smaller solids, if anything, uh, that will end up here. And uh, here we have a little bit less oxygen because 
the bacteria that lives here already use some of it. We, have, we still have ammonia and we still have, we also have nitrite. So the bacteria that lives in here will consume oxygen, ammonia, and nitrite. And then the third top is actually the same. So I just use the same media again because it's for the very same purpose. And then after the water has flown through these first three tubs, uh, we should be left with water that is very low in oxygen and has a lot of uh, basically no more ammonia, no more nitrite and only nitrate. And this is where this role comes into play here. So in order to film this a little bit better, I switched to a wide angle lens. So it may look a little bit distorted, gives you kind of the GoPro look, but at least I can show you better what I'm filming. So again, this is now the area where we have the um, anaerobic bacteria living in it. So the bacteria that doesn't have any oxygen available and only has nitrate available, which is the byproduct from the first row that uh, where a biological filtration took place. So in here, we have some of the best media for um, consuming nitrates. So here we have the Brightwell Aquatics Bioplate. We also have the Seachem Matrix, also very popular material. And then we also have the Seachem Matrix, but the pond version. So these are like bigger rocks, but uh, it's basically the same thing, just different in size. And uh, yeah, the same material, filter material is in the second as well as in the third tub. And then because we have big moray eels that produce a lot of waste, there's a chance that even after three tubs of uh, denitrifying bacteria, we still probably have some nitrates left. And for that, we have a refugium. Here we are at the very last stage of the filtration, and that is the refugium. So this is a 100 gallon aquarium where my clownfish used to live in and uh, I basically repurposed it to be a refugium to grow macroalgae to consume any nitrates that may still be left in the water. The clownfish, they have moved into the aquarium where the moray eels used to live in, so they are now living happily in a 270 gallon aquarium. But uh, yeah, here we have some Colerpa prolifera. And here we have some keto, and these are two of the very best macroalgae for consuming nitrates. And technically, this is all I need to do when it comes to filtration. I have all stages left, uh, I mean all stages covered. And uh, also have you know, all this 800 pounds of rock inside the aquarium, and I have a 3D background everywhere in the back and on the side uh, where beneficial bacteria can grow on. But there's one thing you could do to um, enhance this, if you will, and that is dosing a couple of uh, very specific fluids. So because I have uh, macroalgae in a refugium, I'm dosing something called Keto Grow, which provides a lot of um, minerals for the algae. And in a refugium like this, you have a lot of uh, amphipods and copepods growing in there. And for, in order to feed them, I'm dosing some uh, pythoplankton. And uh, because the system is still relatively new and I have a big eels and a bunch of fish in there, I decided to also dose um, an ammonia remover from MCLOW. And basically this will uh, render any ammonia uh, non-toxic, so it cannot hurt the fish. But it, the ammonia can still be um, consumed by the bacteria and be converted into nitrite and from there into nitrate. And then we also have some vodka dosing going on. So if you don't know what that is, there's a lot of information available online, but basically I'm providing a, a diluted a vodka solution um, to feed the beneficial bacteria as well to uh, hopefully grow them faster. And um, what I used to do before in my saltwater aquarium is I would used to uh, buy bacteria in a bottle, usually API Quick Start or Micro Bacter 7. But I recently found a product that is specifically for monster fish keepers. And this is Monster 460 from Fritz. And here you even see a spotted moray, which is 
very similar in size to the Tessellata when he gets big. So what this is, is <clears throat> this is a specific strain of bacteria which is very good in consuming large amounts of waste. And they also make this in a freshwater version called Monster 360. So if you have, you know, your arowanas, your arapaimas, your uh, freshwater stingrays, any of those big fish, red-tailed catfish, and that might be good for you. But basically, I'm dosing this uh, every two weeks um, after my water change, which is usually around 50%. And uh, the only downside to this is you have to turn off your skimmer so that the skimmer doesn't, uh, you know, eat take it right out of the water for like two days you have to turn it off but uh, yeah other than that that is pretty much my completely custom built filtration system everything made from scratch you know using aquariums repurposing them as a filter because a sump is just a box that you use you know to add uh, by uh, media in it and because I cannot have a nice long sump in here because of all these uh, vertical bars that you see, I simply decided to compartmentalize everything. So we have uh, mechanical bio and, and chemical, mechanical, chemical, and biological all separated. So, and that works really well. And uh, everything is really easy to access. Everything is, you know, very low maintenance. I can see everything clearly because everything is in clear boxes and uh, I decided to have this aquarium face this way because if I ever have any guests in my living room area um, or sleeping overnight you know the the lights that are only on at night they won't you know bother them too much but uh, yeah now the only thing that is left to do is wait 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 for the aquarium to fully establish itself for the bacteria to really grow and then it should be Fine, I mean, I'm not adding any more fish. I will uh, have another video coming up next about what tank mates are happen here. But uh, this is, you know, one way of doing filtration. You don't need to be uh, you know, afraid to do something custom. Uh, you don't have to pay, you know, thousands of dollars for an all-in-one sump. And uh, for something like this, I think this is actually better. So thank you so much for this tuning in for this video. Here's a nice view of the Tessa Alata. Uh, the giant moray is currently way down there. You won't see him in this video, unfortunately. But uh, uh, actually, I have some B-roll that I'm showing you. Uh, it's probably going to show right now. He's a very active swimmer ever since he's been in this tank. He's been loving it, swimming, and uh, Tessa Alata as well. So I'm really happy for the eels. They really deserve it. So yeah, that's it. Thank you again for tuning in. Like I said, next video is about the tank mates. And uh, hope you will watch that one as well. Thank you.